Um, hi guys, my name is Sonia, and I decided to add to my um, project about order book a uh, fixed protocol parser. Uh, so yeah, so this is a new order single message. Um, the message looks like this. So this is like uh, a number equals and the value, and then there is a separator SOH character. So that's one. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the string we're going to parse. And so what I did, I created um, a branch fix order. Okay. And on that branch, um, I have some little code there. But the whole idea is that um, I wanted to give a, a test drive to you know, concepts again. So I like C++ concepts, C++ 20 concepts, and I wanted to see how I can use those concepts in context of, for example, fix parser. So we can have this simple fix message here. I concatenated multiple strings because this is escaped one. So, you know, this way I don't have to escape everything. And I have this iStream message parser, and I have message header here. That's uh, that's something. And it takes as a template parameter this parser's type. Right? It's essentially this. I keep using this remove CVRF because I'm afraid that the compiler will be passing here the reference, and I don't want that. So I'm afraid of those references. <laughs> Go away, references. I want the time. <laughs> so yeah, I have removed CVRF. Now um, I'm parsing this string, and as a result, I'm expecting this output, right? And this is an assert. So this is actually test, and this is just for me to debug it. Let's see if it works. Well, I ran it before, but you can see it does work, right? It's this is the this is the output of this uh, of this little program. The test actually has three tests. The last test here is a full full message of the new order. It's a fake message. It's message type is 13, and then there is some information about the order. So let's see what, what is this iStream message parser. You can see there is a message header and there's a new order single. So you can see that I parse those separately because you parse the header first, and header has a fixed uh, you know format. And then based on header, you need to decide what is this data here. So let's check the message header. A message header is a template depending on message parser type, which is message parser concept. So what we have here, the message header has those fields. Let's go back, let's go back to our test. Okay, our test says we parse this string, okay? I put that in string stream, I parse it. And as a result, right, as a result of parsing, I get this header, dot fix, header, and so on. So all those are values I parsed out of the string. But what are the types of those values? The types are string type, integer type. Where did that came from? It came from message parser type, which is parser concept. So technically, this is not an STD string at all. This can be a string view, or it can be a span, or... I don't know. It's it's something. <laughs> it's something, right? It is something. It's some type from, from parser. So imagine that parser can be now anything. So parser concept tells us the actual storage class for all those values, you know, the storage class for, you know, fixed version, right? But uh, this 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 class here, this message header, it will it will parse message parse message, right? With the parser p where the P is the same. So again, I use forwarding magic, right? So I used um, double ampersand, but double ampersand works as a forwarding reference only for templates, okay? If it is not a template function, it's not a forwarding reference, it's just expiring reference. So I want it to be forwarding reference so that this can be anything you want as a user, right? So as a user, I pass here, you know, I pass here, um, where do I pass it? I pass a parser, and that would be L value reference, right? But I could equally just, you know, I could just equally construct it in place, and that would be expiring value. And this parse message wouldn't care because it is a template with forwarding reference. So we're happy with that. Now, uh, we just say that this P has to be the same as parser type. So this is kind of like, why do I have to do that? Anyway, 
So this is how I parse the message. I say to parser, a parser concept, okay? Parser concept. This is just parser concept. And, you know, it is something like this. Parse me a field, parse me a field, you know? No, I cannot say here that this template type parameter auto is constrained by parser concept, message parser concept. Why? Because I deliberately say this message header depends on this message parser type because I want this message header to contain those, to store those fields using those types. I don't want to use the different parser type here. I want to use exactly the same parser type here. So that's why this is the happening. I'm using template use for wording magic and I use this to make sure that, you know, I'm using the same type. So I use those types the way I use it. I have only defined key type, string type, and integer type because this particular struct using those, those three only, right? The other one might use something else. So this parser parser field will, as you would expect, take those as, you know, take those as reference to set value in those and take this as a value to, to match if the next field is having this 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 number right so let's let's look again at the uh, fixed message how it looks like so fixed message looks like this eight value nine value 35 value so we look for this eight nine 35 uh you see it is going to be eight nine 35 and so on so you see them here so this is this is the order in which we want to the parse to continue also parse field is giving us a boolean so that we can have a chain of them like this. When we parse something, it's a good idea, I think, to chain parsing methods uh, using the boolean return because then the failure, you know, of parsing will then, you know, stop parsing at any stage, you know, and you know you can try different paths and maybe something like this. You can also draw exceptions, but in in this design, I prefer boolean and just say, uh, I don't know, it it kind of kind of looks nice, right? It's 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 nice. Parse parse fixed version and parse body length and parse message type and it even reads nice. I'd say that's just you know my design decision. Now, how does this work? What is this parse field? Let's see the concept because this is message parser concept. Let's see the concept. So again, I defined a concept which is essentially an interface, right? So I'm saying here is parse message requires that this parser here is this is this interface is exposing this message parser concept interface a static compile time interface right so when i then call those those methods right they exist i know they exist because you know i require them in this concept so you know the the class that implements those methods does not need to inherit anything from anything but it has to have those methods somewhere in the class so that I can use them, right? And yeah, so those so this 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 is my my definition of what I require from from this from this concept. So you can also see that I require the types to exist in this in this you know in this concept. I require this this three these three types to be within this within this concept. I also require string type. I didn't have a concept for the string type. Maybe I should create a concept for a string-ish type, right? And I have those methods that allow me to parse a key, a value of different types, and field of different types, right? So to make sure that all of these are possible. Of course, I cannot use templates here. I have to say explicitly, I, I am capable of parsing decimal, of string, of integer, and so on. And you can see that this is like three different different requirements from perspective of concept. But the uh, implementation, let's look at the implementation. I have iStream parser. iStream parser is very convenient, very simple parser, which uh, which uses std iStream. std iStream is very nice, old school C plus plus ninety eight solution uh, for re receiving bytes one after another. So when you parse something, the most uh, the simplest thing you can do is just read next byte, see what it is, and read next byte afterwards, and so on. And stream also allows you to parse the whole numbers. So that's pretty cool because if I'm parsing, you know, if I'm parsing a key, you see. I can just say this this chevron here, double double thing, right? Shift operation, and I don't have to write any code. It just get, gets me the, the the value, and that's something integral. Um, 
if I'm if I'm parsing, you know, some values that is a number concept, and now here here we start with, with concepts. So we're parsing something that is a number. We remember that in the requirements, in the requirements, we said we have this integer, decimal, right, and the string. So this number concept covers this too, right? This cover it covers integer type and decimal type. It probably also covers the key type, but uh, this will be parse key. The parse value would be for integer and decimal in this particular small, tiny version of a parse. It's just to show the, the idea. So you see, this cover this this single function covers two requirements in the concept because I don't say here I want to you know have a version for int, but I have a version for 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 the decimal you know type. I have a just version. I have a version that's for anything that's number concept. That's pretty cool. And if it's a number concept, we parse it like this. Now, if it's a string, and I only have std string, because for this particular concrete implementation, we know that uh, you know from std i stream, I will be getting strings, right? So you know, so this this thing has to define string type as std string, and it defines integer type and a decimal type as int and double, right? Now, strings I parse in this way. I just go over the characters and I keep appending them. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I really don't know. But think of it this way. Uh, you have no choice. You have to read all characters. Now, you can read them in batches. You can do more efficient than that, right? But still, you have to find those. And, you know, so, so yeah. So the code could be more complicated if you want it. And you can implement your own parser using different underlying, you know, source of bytes. So, you know, iStream is giving you byte after byte. Okay. It's use it's using underlying stream buffer. And this 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 is how I so how streams work in, in C. Now you can you can have a different implementation. And I was thinking, yeah, with, with this architecture, with this architecture that this this implements a concept of, of a parser. Nothing prevents me to have a different parser that satisfies this concept and tells me that, for example, string type will be, say, a string view, or maybe it will be a span of an array of characters, right? And that will be efficient because maybe this parser will just find beginning and the end and create a span, and that's it, and will not copy anything. Um, so yeah, and maybe integer type will be a proxy to integer type, an integer that didn't parse yet, just a, just a span in the string in the in the buffer of bytes. And then maybe it would have an operator to convert itself into an integer, you know, and, and this way when you require it, then it would convert itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't make there is options there, right? But my iStream parser is just doing the simplest possible thing to do. So for numeric types, you have this operator. For string, I cannot use this operator because I would include this, this character in that string. And I don't want that. And also because after that character there is a digit following, so I'll be I'll be like, we start from here and we it would keep going I think until the end because there is no space, there's no nothing. It will just it will just swallow all of it, <laughs> and we don't want that. <laughs> so so yeah, so I have to I have to literally iterate like this and just get character by character, right? The parse field is another cool one, right? Look again at the concepts. Concept says that parse field has to exist in um, three flavors, right? A flavor that takes a key and integer type. Second one is key and decimal type and key and string type. But I cover all these three flavors in just one function, parse field, using auto. Again, if we don't know what it is, it's auto, auto. Everything is auto. So, so yeah, we have our auto and uh, yeah, the function looks like this. So thank you, C++20, for being amazing because I can write code that is so short now. And the fact that I can qualify templates with concepts, and this is just automatically matching this. Like, I don't, like, in all C++98, I don't think it was possible to, to do something. Like, you could use tag dispatch. Yes, you could use type traits and tag dispatch, and then you would have here parse value. It is a template, type T, comma, and then the tag int integer tag. And then for string, you have string tag or something like that. Horrible magic. Okay, I did that a lot, but 
this is so much prettier. This is like, come on, you cannot get better than that. That's like, for like we say, anything that matches number, anything that's arithmetic, anything that's a string. I hope string is not arithmetic. So far it isn't because, you know, this compiles and works. So I guess string is not arithmetic, even though you can do this, but that's not arithmetic, <laughs> right? So, so yeah, so that's my, that's my parser. One, one thing uh, that's good about, uh, you know, this string stream is that you can really use it well to build parsers if you want to go old school. If you want to go modern school, you can use Boost Spirit. And funny enough, with Boost Spirit, you, you cannot match the tokens and expressions, you build the grammar, but you're still going like fragment after fragment. You, you kind of like, you know, the, the methodology of parsing the message would be, you know, a similar logic behind it, right? All right, so this parser is using iStream. Now, how does the new order look like? So my new order single, um, in order for me to parse it correctly, I have to have all of those fields. So I have this bits, bit field. For each of those fields, I just say there is or no. Initialize with zero. I use this. This is the new, 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 new. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, so yeah, and, and I do this, right? So I do a switch. So first I parse a key, right? And then when I know, okay, that's going to be client order ID, then I set the bit. So you see how, how convenient it is that those methods return Boolean, because I can set a bit ID or the receive client order ID, right? And I parse. If it's successful, yes, it's one. If it's not, then zero. And the value goes here. So the output of this parse goes here, and this gets set. And this is so nice, you know, so, so concise, and you can easily add more fields. And relatively performant, I'd say. It's not extremely performant, but uh, just think of it this way. Um, I've seen a solution someone proposed to use MMX to split this fixed string using some uh, intrinsic uh, assembly function to find those, uh, you know, to find those uh, SOH characters, these ones, and then create spans and so on. But think of it this way, to do that, you have to actually scan through the input string. That's the first thing. So you have to consume all the string anyway. So I don't know how that differs from having iStream and telling iStream to give you the characters. It probably differs because, you know, iStream goes byte by byte and maybe MMX is going to be faster with that. Second thing is, okay, you have this, say, vector of spans, but they're not, you know, they're not parsed numbers. You need a number and it's not parsed numbers. You still need to process it. You still need to go through this vector. You still need to, you know, this vector will contain lots of tags. And um, I only care about those. Is it not more efficient to just do this as we go? You know, we just got this one, got this one, got this one, got this one, got something that I don't care. Okay, skip it, you know. I would argue that this needs testing. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, because uh, performance is a tricky thing. And some, sometimes you'll be surprised what is more performance, what is less performant. And it's it's more effort. And then it sounds like, oh, actually, it turned out to be slower. Or performance is tiny bit better. And uh, it's not worth it. This one is easy to understand. Now, um, let's see what we else do. I wanted to show you one more thing I'm using here with C plus plus twenty. Ooh, the uh, initializer. Initially, I didn't love them, but I think I love them now. I think I do because look, look how nice this looks. Right. So I say I declare this C here to be input stream get, and then after colon, right, I do expression for the if, right. But this this is this is like okay I have an initialization expression and I have the expression for the if sounds sounds normal show you a different one where is a different one um, I have another one so oh here we go look at this one this one is like um, it's interesting so we have a key type so I declare a variable 
within the scope of this if, the name of the variable is key, okay? Then after colon, I say the expression and the expression is this, and this is a comma expression, which means do everything and then return to the if the value of the last one. It's kind of weird, isn't it? But it works and it looks cool. It's kind of weird because you have like a semicolon here and you have comma here, but it works. It works very well. So yeah, if you wondered if you can do whole programming in single line of if, you can. <laughs> now you can. That's pretty cool, yeah. What do I not like about C plus plus twenty? I don't know. It's amazing. I just I just say it's the best C plus plus ever. I will not change my mind. You know. So we have this uh, message here. Uh, that's my new order. That's my fake new order. And um, yeah, I just create my iStream message parser. I create message header and new order single. Uh, Higher, higher order parser, parser of this particular thing that uses this parser. And then I tell those parser to those parsers to parse the message. And look what I do. I tell the header parser to parse the message. What header parser will do, it will parse the part of the header message, this, this fields. So it will it will it will consume from input stream all of those, I think until here. And the input stream will be at this position. Another benefit of using iStream. Because now you can continue consuming this iStream from here. So that's why that's why I always love uh, using you know streams for parsing and for composing, you know. And uh, well, we probably all use it for composing, but for parsing, for parsing is it's is very good uh, if you want to go byte by byte, <laughs> something simple and yeah. Yeah, so so yeah, so this is what we do first. All right, so what's my next um, idea in my head? I have some ideas in my head. So this is a new order single, and as you can see, there is a number of fields, and th there is a time in force. Now, order type, market or limit will tell me if it's a market order or limit. So th this kind of limit is has to be GTC limit in order for it to be limit, and it has to be limit IOC in order for it to be IOC. And then, you know, market, I don't know what market would have in time in force because um, maybe there is some other value. And then side is going to be buy and sell. So I have all information I need to put into my order book, into my order. Now, my number concept, my price type, my quantity type. Mm, now, it all depends on my parser. My parser says now integer type is in, the decimal type is double. And I'm parsing new order message, which says that, you know, price and quantity will be decimal type. So I'll be using here decimal type, which is double. I'll be using double and double for my price and quantity. I think this is just fantastic. It shows you how you can adapt this super, you know, concept-based, template-based solution, which, which you know, is, is it's just a, it's like a std vector. You can use a std vector for whatever types you want. So, so this is order book. This is my order book that you can use for whatever types you want. It's like you know, it's like a container book, order book as a container <laughs> with matching algorithm. So it has algorithm matching. <laughs> So yeah, so this this is amazing. I'm kind of curious if I'm gonna do this parser that takes a buffer and uh, extracts the spans. Maybe that that could be my second parser at some stage. I made a video maybe about that. Who knows? Um, next thing I want to do is there is a project on GitHub which I want to use. I don't know if I'll be able to find it now. Uh, let me just try to find it. Where is the search box? I think it's called Async IO. Okay, yeah, so that's async IO. That one, I want to use this one. This one is super cool. Here's the server code. So all you need to do on my exchange server, you know, I need to do something like this. So run my async IO, start the server, right? And serve forever. And then um, 
the connection will be in the client. We open the connection and voila, I need to write the client, which will send uh, some fixed message into, into my thing. So this is my te test case, you know? I could have this, you know, my fixed message, maybe command line tool, I put that in command line and I replace this ugly character with some more command line friendly. And yeah, I use command line and it sends into order book uh, the fixed message, you know? That would be cool. And then, you know, I have fun with this. I can do so many things with this. And then there's another thing I can use this uh, for as well. So as you know, my order book has um, execution policy and my execution policy is a coroutine, you know? So because it's a coroutine, here we go. We call await execution policy takes an execution that we generated in the order book and it consumes that execution, makes changes to it, and you know, and then this will proceed. So that may change as well, but I'm doing just for fun a project. So maybe I just make it uh, so that we co await on again. We can co await on something here on this async IO. I can create another service where I'm going to be like uh, doing some things to executions. So we're going to have a server with this exchange and book running. We're going to have a client sending fixed messages and we're going to have another service which will process the executions, um, you know, to, to implement this execution policy, right? I think that would be cool. And this yielded executions back to the user. I think I'll, I'll send this to, as a market data output somewhere. Maybe there would be another service that this could be like, this book it will be sitting in the server. So server will be like publishing maybe this into this this other service. And this other service maybe would be a I don't know, writing into the text file. <laughs> or maybe it is a web app that shows it into, into a, a web browser or something. So many creative ideas in my head. And I don't know if I have enough energy to do this, but it sounds like an exciting project. So many things could be done to this project. Like order book is a source of all, you know, creativity. Yeah. So, so yeah. Anyway, like, subscribe and yeah, follow me and wait for the next videos. They, they coming, they always come. I love, I love doing videos. So, you know, I love C++, I love doing videos. We'll see each other again. See you.